Thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. They're currently running their best sale of the year, and I'll tell you more about that later. Here we are all cleaned up. A little windy out here, so you have to bear with me if the wind causes some noise issues. But it is looking uh, fantastic compared to what it used to look like. There's so much stuff, and here it all is, piled up in the trailer. And then I've got more in the back of the truck, and then just organize some things. But it also shows off the paint job. This is good lighting to show the paint. Um, the end of that last video was starting to get a little dark. So you got the new uh, new paint, new shingles, and then all of the gutters that are existing on the house got painted as well. Same for the soffits and fascias, just everything that's white got painted white. And so all that's looking much newer. It is a satin sheen. You can really start to uh, get a feel for the satin. If I look down the side of the house, you can see that little bit of sheen off of it with the light in the background. That's about as shiny as it ever looks. And that, in my opinion, is a good thing. I don't like shiny stuff. It's like a shiny car with dents. You see every single dent versus um, if uh, you have a flatter paint job, it does not reveal as many uh, imperfections. And with aluminum siding, it's a great siding for protection and uh, how long paint will last on it and all that, but you can dent it. So uh, if there are any dents, this helps with those dents. So let's take a lap around the house, take a look at the paint job, and then we'll move on to what today's task is gonna be. So, in that video, people were talking about I missed a spot. I don't know if we were talking about above this door or what it was, but uh, it all got resolved in the end. Um, questions I was getting, what am I going to do with the foundation? So this will have, you know, something on it. I don't know what I'm going to do, but the rest of the concrete foundation is going to get painted. Some sort of color, whatever I think looks uh, right. Then this will get some sort of a um, stain of some sort on it. Of course, windows are going in. I'm just going to do uh, white vinyl replacement windows. People ask me if I want to do if I would do black or something, I'm just going standard. I'm just going to get white ones. Um, the columns on the front porch, this paint is not what I want to use on these columns, so they'll get painted at a later date. Uh, and I mean, I'll probably paint them white, but who knows? I might paint them something different again. Probably white, though, because it needs to be handrails around it and everything. So the foundation, you know, it's all masonry. So I need to go over it with a pressure washer first, knock off the loose paint, do any kind of scraping. Even if I don't do perfect preparation on the foundation, it's still a masonry surface versus a wood surface. So the paint holds up on that a long time. I've painted other center block houses and it's amazing how long the paint lasts. Round back, this issue was revealed. Y'all know how I feel about concrete blocks just jutting up out of the ground for no reason in the way. So, keep an eye out for, I don't know, this just gives me feelings I might need to resolve. Back of the house, you know, everything's just big and white, but I'm pleased with it. Why did I do white? I just like normal stuff. I don't like doing anything fancy. I don't want to make any big decisions to paint the house blue or something. Um, and there's issues with painting houses darker. 
so this back of this house, I mean, you might be able to see it in the camera, there's a lot of little small dents all over this wall here. I mean, there's this big one on the corner, but there's a lot of small ones down near the ground. I don't know what from, just disrespect, uh, lawnmowers, whatever. But you can see that a lot of that stuff is hidden. Um, there's a lot of little small holes here and there from nails. And I think there's some BB gun or pellet rifle um, holes on this house. I know there's ones over there uh, on that one. So I think there's some on this one as well. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave that stuff for now. And then in the future, if I ever sell this house, I may repaint it again at that time. I don't know how long that may be. And I may spackle up those holes. Or I may spackle them up now. Um, just go around, spackle them, let them dry, kind of sand it smooth, and then just go do some touch-up painting. That's probably what I'll end up doing. And that's also a way I could resolve some of these dents if I really uh, was behooved to do so. I guess you could also use Bondo or something like that. I'm not going to get that serious on it. But um, this little back part is the rough. It's just right there near that back door. Let me make my way onto this side of the house. Let me back up and give you a better view. There we are. Really am thinking it looks pretty good. Um, it's a striking uh, difference between what it is now and what it was. So for that, I'm very pleased. Um, what would have I done to do better? Uh, well, I don't know. I just painted it white. There's not a lot of risk in this. Um, I did get a little overspray on my shingles here and there. I think that will kind of wear off over time. So maybe be a little more careful with the overspray. Uh, with the dark shingles and then spraying white paint that is uh, doesn't take much to kind of show up um, other than that you know got a lot of people saying stuff about the ladder going up and down the ladder I don't know stuff like that just doesn't bother me I didn't feel very tired at all after the paint job um, and talking about the time it takes to move the ladder well you kind of offset all that when you use a sprayer um, and then also I got asked why not use an extension I have an extension I just don't like painting with the extension that much I feel like you don't have as much control and then it requires all this switching back and forth from you need the extension for like two minutes and then you got to take it off and then an extension is really only good if you can point directly at the surface you want so um, uh, you know, you have to get one of those little tips that you can change the angle. It just turns into a thing where you're fussing around a whole lot. So I'd rather um, make it slightly more difficult on myself using just the gun than to make it much more difficult on myself to use something that makes it slightly easier. If that makes sense. Uh, not having windows in obviously makes a huge difference in the prep time. Uh, that's why there hasn't been any windows. People ask me that all the time. I'm concerned about people breaking in and all that. There's really not much in there. I think somebody would be very disappointed if they broke into this house and uh, found what's in there. Um, and I think sometimes people overestimate their uh, uh, glass in their windows right next to the front door. Somebody will worry like a dickens over or not whether they've got a great deadbolt and there's a big window right beside it. Um, I wouldn't sit there like some sort of a lockpicking genius worrying about a door when you could just smash through a window. So I'm, I'm really not that concerned about somebody breaking in. If somebody wants to do it, they're going to do it anyway. Um, uh, these posts, there used to be a fence around that, got asked that a lot, so I, that's why I cut that one down. It was just sticking up past the house just to make it easier on myself. I think all that's going to go and just clean up this whole area, and then I'd love to clean up the whole property line all the way down behind the house. So that's it. Um, just wanted to show that paint job more because I figured that was a big interest to people, that video. I think people really liked it, um, and I'm very pleased with the results. Um, and so you can see overspray in areas. It's just stuff I'm not that concerned about. It can be all be cleaned up. Um, but it also shows, I think, how precise a sprayer is. You know, I'm aiming up even here, spraying that, and it's just that teeny amount of overspray. So that'd be so, it's so minimal. Um, sometimes people think spraying is like super messy. Uh, and then if you use a shield, so that, that sheet metal, piece of sheet metal you saw me holding in my hand, it is just a piece of aluminum. There's a tube on one side of it, and then it's got a handle, and then it just uses that to kind of block stuff. And it really works really good. So like when you're cutting around a door like this, you can just stick that sheet metal in there, and that prevents the overspray. Now you can still get some overspray, but if you're really careful, and you don't get too close to the edge of your shield, you can stop uh, pretty much all of it. But you do have to be somewhat conscious of what you're doing. In today's video, I want to start addressing the porch since it's all cleaned off. I want to start uh, putting something on the ceiling and then I need to resolve above the um, siding on the wall there going up 
into the space. And then on the side porch, there's a little some, something similar to this that I need to work on as well. As mentioned, Simply Safe is the sponsor of this video, so a big thank you to them for not only sponsoring all the videos in the past, but this one as well. Simply Safe offers a very easy to install security system. They mail it out to you, you get it installed in probably an hour or less. I installed mine, the only thing I used was one little screwdriver. I poked a hole for a uh, screw and then I tightened the screw up. That's about it. Other than that, it's just peeling off a little piece of paper off of adhesive strips and sticking the devices wherever they are needed. For me, I have it installed on my own personal home. I have a family, so I just want a system on the house. It's just sort of a peace of mind, whether you're home or whether you're away from home. I have a camera along with all different kinds of devices and using the camera, I can monitor the house through the camera on my phone so that's a pretty slick feature and uh, there's all kinds of other accessories in addition to those uh, devices the cool thing a bit about simply safe to me is you can get into the system and then later you can expand if you need to whether that just be because you decide you want more devices or you move to a larger house for example or a house that just has different security needs you can just customize it to whatever the situation and right now, Simply Safe is having their best sale of the year, which conveniently comes at the time when break-ins increase around the holidays. This sponsorship means a great deal to my YouTube channel. Simply Safe is an excellent company, and because of their support, I am happy to tell you about their incredibly effective, reliable home security that will make sure your home is safe. Your home will be professionally monitored 24-7, and if anything at all happens, they'll make sure the police get called. They have all kinds of really thoughtful features that cover every window, room, and door, plus tons of extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and more. The entire system is really easy and intuitive to use. Again, the only tool I used was a screwdriver to poke a hole and tighten one screw. Their pricing is fair and honest and comes out to 50 cents a day, and that's without any kind of a contract. Their system has you equipped for worst case scenarios and will still work if you lose power, Wi-Fi, or the system is attacked. We live in a very unpredictable world and this security system gives me an edge over the unknown. I'm the kind of person who has insurance on my insurance, so having this system is a no-brainer. And being a person who DIYs my way through everything, why wouldn't I want to install my own security system? If you're concerned about setting the system up yourself, don't be. It comes with a very clear setup guide with text and pictures, and there's plenty of content online that'll guide you through the process. Please join me in showing your appreciation to Simply Safe by leaving a comment below thanking them for sponsoring the Homemade Home YouTube channel. You can also take advantage of their holiday offer by going to simplysafe.com slash homemade home to get a special discount and a free HD camera. <laughs> separate the stud from the siding by running a sawzall between the sheathing and this stud that is at an angle. Hopefully it'll hold up to the nails.
Here's the new door roughly in place. So we got the new threshold. Reestablished the rough opening, mounted the door in place. You can see the door is offset to the left, so I'm going to cut the siding back to where it's equal to what you see on the right. That'll give me the opportunity for some nice wide trim going up each side of the door, and then across the top I'll have to cut the top back a little as well. And then I think what it's going to do is it's going to look nice with the columns. I'm going to have the big columns, and then the bold trim, and then of course you can imagine seeing this door, imagine all the new windows, things are really cleaning up nicely. With this wall being thicker and setting the door flush with the inside so it could swing all the way past the trim flat against the wall, I have to build out the uh, door jam just a little to get out flush to where a trim board can go right here all the way around the door. So that was ripping a one inch thick strip that gets me just past this surface. It's a little uneven since it's uh, just rough sawn boards for the most part. So I went out past it a little bit on its furthest sticks out the most right here. So it'll be flush with this and then basically just going to be a two by six that goes around. Then I'm going to rip a small strip because one and a half inches is how thick a two by, uh, two by material is. Comes out to about here. So then I'm going to rip a little strip that kind of borders the whole thing and then it's going to get caulked and painted and it'll have sort of a profile so it'll stick out the most past the siding. Step down, step down. Well, not step down, it'll step back to this, and I set this back about an eighth of an inch to give me a little kind of a caulk joint that'll hold the caulk better than if it was flush and I just smeared caulk over that seam. So I was going to do a more elaborate trim job where it would go up, there'd be the piece of cross, a piece of crown on top, a little strip between them, sort of like what you'd see on the interior of a house, but I'm going simple to where I can keep moving along. I'm also dealing with the siding and the J-channel, so I didn't want to get all choppy. I thought it would kind of be like a messy attempt at something nicer versus a clean job at something simpler so that's what I'm going with for trimming the door out.
this is the face of one of my trim boards and again this is just a spruce 2x6 you can see those ridges running down it that's where this has been run through a planer this is just dimensional construction lumber so they're not really concerned with it it's just being uh, planed very fast just to get it down to dimension and that's why you see so many cuts per inch I guess you'd call it a finished planer here's a small one I'm gonna run through this and this is gonna get a perfectly smooth finish and that will help with paint and you won't have those telltale planer marks that you have in dimensional lumber. Here's the difference between a planed board and a standard 2x6. We've got tear out and the marks from planing and then this one is very smooth, nice for a paint job. So the next thing is ripping a small strip that will stand out a little bit past this and that's just going to add a little step to dimension. Let's take a look at the final result, for now at least. So yes, if you're wondering, I'm not a fan of what it looks like under the door. But the reason it looks like that is because this porch is lower than the threshold of that door. Normally, porch would basically be right up to it, where you could just walk in nice and easy. But, just the way this is, and I may change it in the future, I may, um, it's concrete porch, bust it up, and frame a pressure-treated porch right here. Um, but I am pleased with it. It's very simple. Um, but like I said, I'd rather be clean and simple than messy and fancy. Very, very simple. All it is basically is a little picture frame around the door. So again, the door jam, one inch shim stock, a plain 2x6 just to get that clean face for painting, and then this strip of wood right here is basically three quarters of an inch, stands out one inch, and just gives us this nice little step. So I just wanted to be stepped out a little further than the siding. This sticks out three quarters of an inch. This sticks out one inch. So we're quarter inch proud. Then one inch back to the face of the trim. And then that is what the corner looks like. And all this will be caulked up. So that gives it a really clean paint job. So I'm going to prime it. Then I'll caulk the joints. And then I'll paint it. I'm not going to do the caulking and painting right now. I'm going to do that at the same time I do the uh, columns and all that. Plus, it's too cold to do it at the moment. Um, so, one may think that I'm just an excellent measurer, but that's what J-Channel allows you to do. So, when I was doing all this, I had the J-Channel pushed all the way. I took my measurements, gave myself a little bit of allowance because if there's any kind of siding pieces back in there, and then afterwards... You just take that J-channel, push it right up against it, and that's because I slipped it behind the siding. It's not nailed off like it normally would if you were doing a new install. This is just a piece of vinyl J-channel. This is aluminum. So it's trapped in there, though, because there's a flange that goes behind the siding, and then it's up against this uh, edge of the trim. So it can't go anywhere, but it does allow you to push it and make yourself look like you either expertly measured or had just sided the house. There's that side as well and above and then again what I'm going to do up in here is some sort of vertical pieces of wood there'll be a strip that goes across that stands it off proud from all that 
just for spacing and then uh, vertical pieces like I did on the side porch if you remember um, so there'll be a little bit of space of siding above that not sure what I'm gonna do the light originally I was gonna put it above the door but I'm kind of thinking that I may no originally it was coming over here to a hole then I tore the ceiling out so I could put it here on the side or I could put a fan and a light that hangs here I'm not sure I'm tempted just to put it right here for now and then I can do something different in the future if I want. Next up, we're going to be working on the ceiling in here and this wall and probably handrails. That is going to wrap things up for this video. Glad y'all could uh, spend the time watching it. Um, as far as fiberglass doors go, why did I pick it over steel versus wood? I know that's a question I'd probably get asked. A uh, fiberglass door is pretty resilient. You've got a lot of uh, finishing options, so it's not going to dent, it's not going to rust, all those things that can happen to a steel door, and then it's just lower maintenance than a wood door. A uh, wood door is nice, but again, this being a rental, you know, I just want everything to be as low maintenance as possible. It's also the first time I've used a... Um, this might be the first time I've ever actually installed a new... Uh, a new exterior door. I have removed the doors from every house that I've owned and reinstalled the old doors um, just trying to avoid the cost of a new one but the one that was in there was still okay but was just poorly installed usually it means it's crooked and you open you just barely unlatch the door and I think swings open and smacks the wall or the handrail if it opens swings outside or whatever the case may be. So the door was about 260 or 70 dollars then there's the couple of uh, uh, two by six pieces and shims, you know, some nails. It's not, um, other than the door, it's really not all that much when lumber is not too crazy high. So you're looking at basically $300 for a, a DIY install of a front door. Um, if you paid someone to do this, I bet it'd be $1,000 is my guess, $800 to $1,000 if you just paid a person to come in and do a door. Um, uh, but I'm sure it could be much more. I'm talking that's kind of like a, an economy door install would probably be somewhere around there. Um, I could have waited and had a new door put in when the windows are in, but I kind of wanted to do it. I wanted to make a video on putting a door in. Now, it is a little more abstract than a very simple standard install of like if it was a new construction, I could have had this done in a couple of hours. This took three days. Now, it took three days of me working on it a little bit each day and scrolling around doing some of my other projects. And a lot of times what stops me on a project is not that I'm slow doing it, but it's that it uh, it's about to get dark and I need to get something from Lowe's. By the time I get back, it will be dark and then the filming's kind of messed up. So a lot of times I'm kind of working within my uh, YouTube parameters. Um, which makes it very tricky. This house would be done. I think a lot of times people think there's something wrong with me and that I'm choosing to make my renovations uh, take forever. But when you're working on these things and filming them and then producing the videos, um, uh, I could not work on this thing at a normal speed and be able to film them. And then even if I had someone filming me, I wouldn't be able to um, keep up with editing and posting them. Even if I had somebody editing them and posting them for me, I wouldn't be able to keep up with responding. It would just be too much. And um, uh, with anything in life, as far as working goes, the usually the more you work and the faster you work, the more you get paid. But it does get to that point where you're kind of like, uh, you know, um, I don't know if that face meant anything to y'all, but that was my best way of explaining it. Uh, um, uh, and, and that is, I'll admit, that's if everything's going good. I don't have any kind of a financial problems. You know, I have a very low-cost lifestyle and most anything that I do increases my income. Um, whereas a lot of people, I think, the more they do, they usually are costing themselves some sort of money um, buying stuff and then that stuff requires time and, and all that kind of thing. Most of my interests are profitable. Um, with that said, if I uh, was not making these videos and was a rich man, would I work on junky houses? No. Um, but it is a good way for me to make uh, an income, and I do have a family, so I have to, you know, stay on top of it. Can't just uh, do what I want all the time. So I think it is a happy medium, but it is something I will admit that I would like to shift towards something that I enjoy more. And I know for people who really like watching the videos, that may scare them. 
but I think I just need to, I think actually what I would like to transition towards on this channel would be much more uh, applicable, that's a hard word to say, to a broader audience. And what that I think would be, so this is my first time mentioning this, is I want to buy nicer houses. I may have said that before, but I want to buy nicer houses that it's not as abstract of a project. Like a project like this is abstract. Like most people, you buy this door, it's got brick molding. You remove the old door and then you just push it against the siding and, and then shim it and screw it off. And then you're done. But something like this, I'm removing the brick molding, making my own trim, and then uh, you know fitting it in, making decisions. The wall it's mounted into isn't uh, completely plumb, so deciding, do I want to put the door out of the plane of the wall, but make the door swing correctly? So it's a lot of stuff like that, that if you paid somebody to do this from the street, it would look fine, but then when you got to fooling with it, the door wouldn't shut quite right. Um, you know, I get a lot of people telling me to hire people to do this and that, but... It is very difficult. If you are in a project and you want to keep the project moving and you're all, you, you, you go full time finding people to work on stuff. And then a lot of times too, you do all this effort and, you, and somebody will talk to you, come look at it and do all that. Say, yeah, it's going to be $2,500 to do whatever it is. And you go, great, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Uh, and then they go, okay, yeah, I'll be able to do it in three months. And you're like, I can't wait three months to do this. So you get caught in this thing of just doing everything on your own. So what I want to do is buy houses that need some improvement, but it's all really straightforward stuff. Um, and that is just carefully picking the house. Um, so you're picking a decent area and then finding just a decent house that basically just needs a cleanup. Maybe it needs a new door, but it's a normal uh, install. Maybe the interior doors need to re be replaced, but again, it's normal. Not needing fully rewired, you know, a total gut job like these. So I'd like to transition towards that which I think that would apply to you all much more in most cases because um, I think a lot of people aren't going to be able to enter this cash. So that probably a lot of people will be getting a loan. And when you get a loan, you can't get loans on junk like this. The bank doesn't want to end up with something like this. Um, uh, I got this from a bank not wanting to end up with it. You know, It was getting sort of foreclosed on. They didn't want to end up with it. So I was able to use that to my advantage and get this house for a really cheap price. Um, because what's a bank going to do? Send their handyman over here? You know, he's not going to fool. I mean, they don't have a handyman. <laughs> but, um, but I would just like to transition into things that were easier on me. But again, I think that those would be probably more along the lines of what you all would be working on yourselves. Maybe more in line with your personal homes. And that's why you're interested in this, improving your own house. Um, and then uh, they, again, would be projects that would just be easier to hire people. Um, to, to do. I would also be able to look at this house up front and say, okay, I see the house needs this, 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 this. And, and if it's a house that's clean enough, you'll be able to know that it's not just going to be full of hidden stuff. A house like this is a mystery. And that's why people say, well, what kind of inspections do you do? You'll look at it and you know right off the bat it's a piece of crap. So you know it's you don't need to inspect it. It's all bad. <laughs> and that is kind of the way these places are. But I want to be able to look at houses and go, I can see what everything is, and then I can plan out the whole project, hire some people, and then um, uh, and it, there may be a wait. But once you start getting things scheduled, and and that time comes to where you know your people do start showing up a couple months into the project, uh, um, then it can maybe be more back to back and then get rolling. Um, so you would uh, save time by taking time up front to plan things. But again, that's just not possible in a house like this. Or if it is, I'm not good enough to do it. Um, so that is plenty of talking on that, but that's just sort of along the lines of what I'm thinking. I need to uh, reduce the amount of time and effort, basically, that it takes me to get these houses um, pushed through to turn them into rental property. But then at the same time, I, I want to continue to make these videos and really enjoy it. Um, so I think that is a way to do it and uh, keep both going. I think make the videos actually more entertaining. I've got several houses now of fixing up really junky places. So I've got that library of videos there that I can reference people if they need to know that type of stuff. And I'm sure I'll end up with some more junk in the future. I'm not, you know, against buying it. I just don't want to if I, uh, as far as, I don't want it to be my goal. I don't want it to be the path that I'm going down. Ultimately, I would just like to buy rental property and renters are already in them and not have to do anything. Just 
buy rented out property. Uh, that would be nice. Um, I have done that once, but it's still a rough house, but it already had somebody in it. They didn't want to leave, um, so they're still there. Um, so uh, that is it. I hope y'all learn from these little learn. That sounds condescending. Um, I hope y'all get something out of these little, uh, not speeches, uh, ramblings that I put on the ends of some of these videos. I haven't done it as much lately. I've been in such a rush. I just try to wrap the video up. As soon as I'm done, I'm like, I got to go at it. And I do. I need to go do it on this one too. But um, this is the stuff that I think is much more valuable than you seeing me beating a nail with a hammer. I, I don't get, um, I understand the entertainment value. I don't want to uh, uh, lessen my videos or anything like that or take away from them. But for me, the goal of these videos is they do have to be entertaining or nobody's going to watch them. Then in how I show them, I want there to be something to where you kind of be like, get a feel for how things are done. But then I want to be able to put things into context with the talking. And some may go, well, what does your YouTube channel and how you want to do these houses have anything to do with, you know, somebody who's just strictly looking to um, get into doing what you're doing but not the YouTube side of it? Well, I, I think it's showing a progression. I'm not doing anything that's strictly being steered by making these videos. Um, my first goal in life was to, uh, not first goal in life, but first goal with all my real estate stuff was to create passive income. And then once I was in it, I was like, okay, I'll open this up to like, if a wholesale deal comes along, I'll do that. Or if I can, uh, you know, buy, renovate and um, sell a house, I would do that. I'm open to anything. But again, my biggest goal is creating passive income. And even if your passive income, a lot of times people will say, you know, why wouldn't you just buy a house and sell it and you can make fifty, seventy-five thousand dollars $75,000 and move on? Well, that's going to get taxed differently right off the bat. Also, it's just a job. It may be a high-paid job, but it's just a job. You also, I said fifty or seventy-five thousand. Oftentimes, people don't really make that much money. People do huge projects, big projects, um, and then be happy if they make fifteen thousand. And again, fifteen thousand, then they're taxed on it. Um, so, uh, and I think also, like you get into talking about financial stuff, people get so silly. They get like so self-conscious, and and instead of listening to a person. And considering what that person's saying for that person and what that person is doing, they kind of introduce their own feelings to it and where they are in life, and and then make a judgment when there was really something there extremely valuable to learn. Um, you know, it's really easy to get in your own way, and sometimes you got to kind of just step back, turn your brain off, and just listen. Uh, turn your feelings off and just listen. Um, uh, that got me a little distracted. I'm thinking usually two or three times more than what I'm saying in these videos. It's real tricky. Um, so how long have I been talking? 12 minutes, way too long. Need to go ahead and end this. Thank you all for uh, watching. Check all the links below, including the link to my ebook on how I buy these places, as well as the Simply Safe link. They've been a huge supporter of this channel, as you all know, partnering to make these videos. Um, very much kind of en uh, enjoyed working with them and the people, my contacts with them. So that's been really fun. Um, the link below has their little special holiday offer, so check that out if it's a good fit for your house and your lot in life at the moment. Uh, it has been for me. I've been very pleased with it. So um, thank you all. Hope you all have a uh, good whatever time of the year I'm posting this video or whenever you're watching it. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.